It's up to 15,000 meters. The world's best lined in the uh, front rank with Katarina Neumannova already a gold medal in her pocket, and away she goes. David Goldstrom together with uh, Inge Braten, and isn't that a magnificent sight, Inge? Yes, it is, and I think this is the most popular uh, we have in the, the cross-country skiing at the moment. And we can also see all the spectators more today than it was uh, a couple of days ago. We have more people here from, uh, from Germany, especially on this Saturday. Yes, but good number of spectators from all over Europe and indeed the United States and Canada and some from Australia as well. And uh, as they go up the first climb here, take us through this uh, first loop of 3.75 kilometers, which they do twice on the Bergstadt. And they go directly into a steep uphill where they are just now. We can see a girl from uh, Germany fall. Also number 21 is uh, Confortola from, uh, from Italy. And over who was uh, 14th in the uh, opening uh, opening race so the Russian are very strong here in the start of this uh, Perseus stop actually let me correct that straight away she was actually sixth in the 10k uh, freestyle skate so Zabialova being as close up as she is now and uh, remember that she's a pretty decent classic racer as well got a bronze in the 15 kilometer classic race in uh, Val de Fiemme in 2003 and you can see there the uh, ranking Yatskaya from Kazakhstan is in the lead at the moment Olga Yatskaya and then we have Marit Björgen Baranova but this is a little uh, longer behind yeah it's from number four to number eight nine so uh, after this, remember it's 7,500 meters, so they've still got uh, two and a half thousand meters to do. Baranova, Chepalova. But this is interesting. Uh, Chepalova is only six seconds behind the leader, and she is maybe the best in the, in the skating. Becky Scott, the Olympic pursuit champion, just a couple of seconds ahead of Katarina Neumannova. Paruzzi also in there, the best for Italy. And Kunzel, actually, despite all the problems, and Jochen Belli was not optimistic about her uh, chances, up there, and Hilda Pedersen, 28 seconds to find ahead of uh, the young Paul Kowalczyk. Skis, where do I have to go? Where, what, in what way shall I do it? So what are they going to change now as they come into the pits? Both the skis and the poles, they go with poles uh, 10 centimeters shorter than in classical technique and also the skis are uh, down to 177, 182. And uh, Julia 20, Chapalova... 20 centimeters shorter. Julia Chapalova has done a great job here in third place pit stop. Marit Bjergen in there and running and uh, Baranova. Now this is the management. 4.1 second is Tepalova behind. Parozzi also good in this first uh, classical technique. And uh, remember, the Italians, they've had a 1-2. Pietro Pilacotra and uh, his roommate, uh, Fulvio Valbuza. And uh, Bjergen, very efficient, getting out there. But it's not necessarily a demanding lead, a commanding lead. But look at the others. She has been, of the first three, she's been the most efficient. Yeah, the Russian had no good uh, pit stop. Pit stop but uh, uh, in terms of change time in the pits? Uh, she was uh, number six. She was uh, 1.6 tenth of a second uh, behind. Lassila from Finland was the best one. So, at the half distance, uh, this is the order you can see on your screens there. Claudia Kunzel and Katarina Neumannova, Steyra, who uh, was successful in Prajolato, the dress rehearsal for the Olympics, the uh, Norwegian. And up front, Bjergen. And they are going together, she and the Tibalo. And uh, I'm between Canmore in Canada and Bend in uh, Oregon. But she lost uh, five seconds, uh, David, in the, at the pit time, Becky Scott. She was uh, almost five seconds slower than the others. So here we are, 9,000 metres, so still 6,000 metres to go. And uh, Becky Scott, wearing 19, leading the chase here. And uh, she's got to find... Uh, nine seconds, Paruzzi with a Baranova slipping off the pace now. Well, this is where we're looking for one or two to come from behind, particularly where is uh, Neumann over 18, that's Yatskaya still. Most important in the second lap, you saw the Nordic combine in the same appeal uh, yesterday.
Marty Pierre can have to try to do it there, but now it's Chepalova. Yeah, Chepalova deciding that uh, she thinks that and Marit... she's going away. Yeah, she's deciding that Marit Bjergen's only got one pace and one gear, and uh, Chepalova, who will be re who would have been reading the body language of Marit Bjergen from behind, and has decided to go. Now there are two reasons why she's decided to go. One, the body language of Marit Bjergen. Secondly, the information she's getting from her coaches on the side there about the progress of Peruzzi and Scott. Yeah. That uh, what uh, Chepalova heard, I think. So it was a little bit too slow in the in the leading group. And interesting there that uh, Neumannova and Kunzel are travelling together. And also Steira, they were together also last time. It was uh, Persia start Steira and Neumannova. So into the stadium comes uh, Julia Chepalova, coached uh, by her father Anatoly. They're very much uh, a team that uh, do their work separately from the Russians. 28 years of age, uh, greatest early claim to fame coming in Nagano when she was almost omitted from just about every race. But then they put her into the 30k race, the freestyle skate there, and she took gold. And from that moment, she was one of the world stars in this sport. Now, look at the gaps there. Bjergen with a 12 second advantage over Peruzzi and Scott, Baranova slipping back, but how far are Neumannova? Neumannova and uh, Steira, 25 seconds, so to get to uh, Bjergen... So here we are with uh, Julia Chapalova opening up a wider margin here over Marit Bjergen, who Inge looks as if she's getting a little tired now. She's uh, struggling. The technique is not that good uh, as it was in the start of this uh, skating lap. I think she did too much in the classical technique, uh, Marit uh, Bjergen. But we also know that Chapalova is the best skater in the world when she is in good shape. And you, you saw the little graphic there telling you that the gap is virtually 75 metres between Julia Chapalova of Russia who was 8th and 5th in the two double pursuit uh, World Cup races, the build up races to these world championships and uh, has made no secret that she's been preparing solely for the uh, world championships here in Oberstdorf and Chapalova looking uh, very strong and now from here Inge she really won't want to uh, let this go What's, the, what's interesting here, David, is uh, can uh, Marit Björgen keep the gap to the to Becky Scott and to to Paruzzi? I don't think anybody can do anything with uh, Chapalo. She is in very good shape, like in the Salt Lake City uh, three years ago. Yeah, the Olympic champion in '98, over 30 kilometers in freestyle. The sprint champion in uh, 2002. But it seems to that the gap from uh, Björgen to the others is also bigger. Bjergen uh, has just She's more standing between the skis in that uh, that appeal, more than uh, Olga Chepalova. So the kick is not that good as for Chepalova. Now closing on uh, Becky Scott and uh, Gabriela Peruzzi, and I think it's Styra who's getting uh, up there with them. Together uh, with Neumannova. Together with... Uh, I didn't see Neumannova, but she can't be far behind. But here comes the woman from uh, Moscow. And uh, not everybody who's a great junior fulfills their promise at senior level, but Chapalova certainly won. And now we're going to get a really interesting time check with 2.25 uh, kilometers left at this point here for Julia Chapalova. A little less now. Marit Bjergen, 13 seconds down. But Steyra is in the third place. Steyra, who's come on really strong. And uh, it's... Uh, just looking there, Styra just going through the foreground. The camera actually missed her there. Uh, Styra has taken Peruzzi and Becky Scott, the Olympic champion. And uh, Neumannova at the moment not making an impression. Here's Katerina Neumannova, who's uh, catching Baranova very quickly. But it doesn't look to me as if she's got enough snow left here to get a bronze medal. Styra has been three seconds faster than Yulia Tepalova from the, from the passing stadium. Well, this is uh, quite a run from uh, Christine uh, Styra, born in the very north of uh, Norway. The winner this year, as I said, of the Prajolato double pursuit there. A really tough 
uh, course there. She was very impressive. Only 23 years of age and uh, a skier with a great deal to offer and uh, showed her best form uh, before she had that victory in Ramsau when she was runner-up over 15 kilometers in uh, December. And Styra may be a little bit of a threat to uh, Bjergen, but at the moment it's Russia, Norway, Norway. Yeah, but I think the gap from uh, Bjergen to Steyr is uh, too big. We have uh, one more uh, steep uphill, but she is coming more and more. Look at the tempo of uh, Kristin Styra. She's got the bit between her teeth. And uh, also Styra will be well aware that she doesn't want to give a chance to any of those behind. When she made the break, she had to make it decisively. And she's looking at Marit Bjergen's back and wondering whether she can get that close. Bjergen will always have a little bit extra on that downhill and uh, remember she's a great sprinter if it comes to a sprint between her and Styra to the line don't uh, rule out Marit Bjergen Chapalova out on her own yeah she's very strong and will Chapalova be in the sprint in a couple of days she's the winner as you told from the Olympics but uh, she has done no sprint after that not necessarily uh, the, no, the view we got from the Russians was that she was going to uh, concentrate probably go into the team freestyle sprint because this year the sprint is in classic so I don't think we'll see Julia Chapalova in the individual sprint but I think we'll see her in the team and she'll definitely of course be in the relay but uh, a silver medal a gold one uh, beckoning and uh, if I look at the uh, record of Julia Chapalova in the world championships well before the silver the other day she got a bronze in the sprint in 2001 in Lati and a gold with the Russian team in the relay but that's it so uh, this medal will be extremely important to uh, Julia Chapalova and here we have the last uh, appeal. And Marit Bjergen just getting a second win now. Chapalova, she's uh, going to be pressed, I think. She knows and her coaches will know that she, she, Chapalova's got to go full out maximum. But what about the gap between those two? Well, Styra, the camera angle is actually a bit deceptive. Yeah, it's, it's more that, the, that we see here. It's foreshortening. But this is a really hard trail, and uh, just 650 meters to go for Julia Chapalova. But I tell you what, the legs are getting really tired yeah, now. It's more speed in uh, Marit Bjergen at the moment, but it's more than 10 seconds. She cannot uh, manage it. They're both desperate to get to the top of this little Look last here, David. That's the most fresh girl at the moment. Yeah, Kristin Styra challenging, and Styra has got uh, eight seconds to find on teammate Marit Bjergen. And uh, look at this, uh, moving up into uh, fourth place now. Peruzzi weakening, can't do any more. And Becky Scott goes back into fourth place. Then Peruzzi, and on the charge, Baranova getting back into the race. And then Neumann over. But here comes Julia Chapalova, down with just about 120 meters to go. Silver, just 48 hours ago in the women's 10 kilometer freestyle in tears beaten by just 1.2 seconds by the Czech Republic's Katarina Neumann over but here comes the first individual gold medal for the girl with the brightest smile on the whole of the tour Julia Chepalova is world champion over the double pursuit and here comes Marit Bjergen into silver medal position here being pursued by Kristin Styra but the cushion is great enough for Marit Bjergen and Chapalova a very speedy downhill 
Jürgen made nothing on the downhill descent. And Christine Styra, what a success in it for her to get a world championship medal at the age of 23. Yeah, and she is only better and better for every race. Nobody wants to finish fourth, but I'm afraid Becky Scott, the Olympic pursuit champion, she's claimed that place ahead of Peruzzi in fifth, but Anova in sixth, who I'm really impressed with how she lost her position but then stabilized and counterattacked. And uh, Neumann over seventh, but 48 seconds separating. And Chapalova, well, she always reckons that she should be on the top step of every race she enters. And uh, it's a wonderful day for her. And then uh, Lassila and uh, Korkina from uh, Russia, number eight and number nine, and Kinsel, number ten. Yeah, that's a very good race for Claudia Kunzel uh, when you consider the disruption to her preparation with flu and uh, the disruption that causes. Uh, to finish tenth is not bad at all. She's the number one for the host nation. Hilda Pedersen, one minute twenty-three. The finger with the uh, with the stadium. Well, a very interesting race on two uh, very different tracks. But this is the woman. She wears number two, but actually she finishes number one. At 28 years of age, Julia Chapalova is world individual champion in the double pursuit. This is only the third time the double pursuit has been contested in the world championships. The first one in 2001 was won by Verpi Koitinen. That was over 10...